All right. Mm -hmm. Hi, everybody. This is so exciting. Very exciting. I am so excited about this call. I was just saying to Audrey mm -hmm. that um, that I, with all the classes we've done throughout this year, um, we ended in November, the end of November, and I thought, well, it's a busy holiday season. That's where we're going to end. And it didn't feel complete. <laughs> And I reached out to Audrey and asked her if she would be available to, to lead this class. And I think you came, I can't remember what the, whether, who came up with the topic. I'm imagining it was you. Um, and, uh, and I just felt so happy about that. So I, I want to welcome all of you. If you don't know me, my name is Michelle Yasuda, and I'm the program director for the Foundation for Conscious Living uh, Big Leap Home Online Programs. That's a mouthful. And these programs support individuals, organizations, and communities in generating agency, connection, and creativity on our shared planet. And I love that intention. And this circle of, of uh, this, this, well, I see it as a circle tonight. Um, this class that we're offering is, is one of the opportunities we have to play in the Hendrix world with the tools of Katie and Gay Hendrix. And um, we have the wonderful, amazing Audrey Hayes Camp with us tonight, who is a master coach and someone who I enjoy so much being in the presence of, um, someone who is a master at presence. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm looking forward to turning the call over, but I have one more, a couple, a couple logistics. So one is if you have questions during this evening's call, please put them in the chat. And if you could write three question marks in front of it, I'll see your question much more quickly and uh, I won't miss it. So, um, so, and then at the end of the call, we'll have some time for those questions. So please feel free to do that. And the other thing is, to, I want to invite you all to join our Big Leap Home Network, which is a community space, an online space, where you will learn about Hendrix uh, activities that are happening. You can interact with coaches. Katie Hendrix is on the network. Um, it's a place where you can come and share your journey of discovering these tools. And so I'll put a link in the chat for that. It's totally free to join that. And we'd love to have you join that community. So Audrey, I'm going to turn the call over to you. Thank you so much for being with us again. And um, I'm looking forward to this call. Cool. Thank you. I'm sort of deciding, do I want to spotlight myself or do I want to be in the gallery? Yeah. <laughs> right now, Michelle, you're spotlighted on my. Oh, yeah. As soon as you talk, it should go over to you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really like looking at myself that much. So let me go to gallery. <laughs> well, I feel very excited to be here. And um, thank you, Michelle, for the request to do this because this is one of my favorite subjects. Uh, and also one of the things that's made the biggest difference for me. So I am, I have what I call a compulsion for completion. And I just love even saying that the compulsion for completion. You know what? Can you get my headphones and the, and the cord? Oh, <laughs> I'm not sure who that was, but uh, and the reason being is that I have made a you know early on in my in my studies with Gang Katie, I made a commitment to a new sense of aliveness and and participation with my life, and and what I noticed was like I wanted to keep that growing and refining. And one of the places that got really tuned up for me was any place that I was incomplete or, you know, that all of those places were like, if you think of, um, of a sieve that you like, you know, put pasta in that the, where the water runs out, like any place that I wasn't complete was kind of like a sieve rather than being a reservoir for my creative energy and for my life force energy, all of those places where I hadn't, hadn't finished something or hadn't completed a conversation or hadn't done what I said I was gonna do or 
all sorts of different places like that. Those places were all places where my life energy, my creative energy were, you know, being kind of drained out. And I wanted access. You know, my commitment was to this kind of, what does life look like if I'm moving around in the, in the full capacity of myself? And completions were a big place for that. So I'm, what I'm sharing with you is stuff that I've kitchen tested a ton and that I'm always looking for. So like, where is it that I feel incomplete? Um, I also like, I sort of like the word leftovers. Like where are there leftovers that I either, that I need to either kind of dump or I need to use so that I'm not, I don't have all of this stale energy or energy draining out that then, you know, when I really want to be doing something takes my, you know, takes away from my capacity to do it. Um, I just have a, a moment I want to uh, want two things. One is I have on, on this call, which I feel super stoked about, the person that's known me the longest in my life, which is my sister. <laughs> so my sister is on the call, which is very exciting to me. And I feel a little bit nervous. And I, um, so the, and I also have the person who's known me the least amount of time, which is my new dear friend, Renee, who I just met like a week and a half ago at a dance event and just had this instant like kismet with Renee. So thank you both for being here. Um, I just like, I just love, there's kind of a bookend there, which just feels really sweet. And then all of you who I may or may not know and excited to, to share and get to know you a little better tonight. So I also wanna turn your attention to this very cool print up here. This is like an expression of, of completion right here. So this is gonna be one of my examples, which is why I think I chose this place. Um, I moved from Michigan to California in 2006. And um, one of the completions of bringing kind of the things that I loved from Michigan to me was this. this and this didn't come to me till just a few years ago. <laughs> so my complete like movement to California with all the things I love happened here. So this was an example of completion here. So with all that, let me just ask a couple of questions. We're gonna, uh, let me tell you what I think we're gonna do and we'll see how it unwinds is that I wanna ask a few questions and have you tune into what your relationship is to getting complete. Um, I also like to say getting current, which has multiple uh, meanings, which means like getting in the current of your energy, getting right in the middle of your energy. It also means like when you're current, you have more access to currency, like financial currency, if that's of interest to you. And also um, getting into the current moment. Oh, by the way, I'm on a chair that bounces. So, uh, <laughs> You may notice I do that. So it has a, like getting complete is also about getting current, getting into the present moment and getting available for your life energy to flow, for what you really wanna be here for to flow, for creativity to flow, to be available to receive the stuff that you wanna be receiving in your life. Because if you have a bunch of incompletions, it's draining your capacity to do that. It's taking you either backwards or forward. You're like, it's generally taking you backwards or down, not forward and out. So let me ask a couple of questions. Who here, and you can just raise your hand, would be interested in um, feeling more energy, more life energy, more creative energy in their life? Anyone not want that? <laughs> Uh, is there anyone here that would like a greater sense of their own vitality and possibility? <laughs> anyone here that would like to enjoy more money in their life? <laughs> just for fun, just for fun. Um, and anyone here that would like to have deeper, more connected relationships in their life? Okay, great, you're in the right place because getting complete is of service to all of those things. Now, 
One of the things that I think keeps people from getting complete is that it also delivers a couple of things. Not that it delivers a new sense of aliveness, vitality, and freedom. <laughs> now, while most people, and I've, I've probably coached hundreds, at, well, definitely hundreds of people, that almost everyone I talk to wants a greater sense of freedom and free choice in their life. Is there anyone else that wants that? Like, you want to feel more free and available for life, doing cool stuff, freed up? Yeah. So most people want a greater sense of freedom and vitality in their life. However, with freedom comes a sense of responsibility. And while most people say they want more freedom, when they actually start to get more freedom, it's oh, like, it's, it can be scary because then you have all of this choice available to you. And when you're incomplete, when you have a bunch of like loose ends lying around, it actually distracts you from that sense of, of freedom. So while most people want freedom, they often are not willing to do what it takes to get there. And when they start to get there, it actually, they get scared. So when, an awareness of when you move towards completion, one of the things you're going to generate for yourself is a greater sense of freedom and free choice. I think that's a great thing, but for, mo I, for most people, it's a great thing and it's also a scary thing. The second thing that almost always happens when you come into a, an experience of completion or when you move towards completion is that you free up feelings. I'm just gonna pause and take a breath there because while I experience freedom, feel like experience my feelings as allies, like I love feelings. I'm a big feeler. I love expressing, I love welcoming feelings, I, that most people do not have that same level of relationship with their feelings. So one of the things that comes with getting complete or current is often whatever feelings you've been avoiding by staying incomplete. It could be sadness, it might be grief, it might also be a sense of, you know, like, I call it procrastinating your joy. If you keep saying no to something you really wanna do and you don't complete and move towards that, you don't get to feel that same joy, but joy is also a pretty vulnerable feeling. So a few of the things that are reliable that come with completions are freedom, a sense of aliveness, often a flow of feelings that you get to um, make friends with, hopefully, <laughs> and a greater sense of choice. And likely you're gonna feel smarter, happier, more abundant, you know, all the things we say we want, but often are too scared to actually go ahead and, and receive that. So. I'm gonna start, well, I've kind of started, but I wanna give you a sense of where you are relative to your relationship with completion. So I'm gonna, and here's how we're gonna set this up, is I want you to be in a space where you have a little bit of movement available to you, so you can feel where you are. You might even like, I call it giving yourself a little friendly airport pat down. Like, okay, here I am, whew. We're gonna be asking questions and I want you to do your best to allow your body to respond. Which means if I ask, if we're gonna ask a question and I want you to, to kind of grade yourself. This is not like a passing grade or a failing grade. It's just an assessing kind of grade. Is a, to grade yourself between a one and a 10. And even though you don't know what my questions are yet, the one is like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, like, like, are you speaking English? That kind of one. 10 is like, got this, no problem. No, you know, got it. And all we're gonna do is just kind of have a sense of where you are relative to your relationship. Now, just as a quick reminder, people who choose to live in completion or a sense of currency 
are able to move through their life with a sense of vitality, aliveness, creativity, and clarity. And you, when you're complete, you have this capacity to lean into your learning and to um, have this kind of mindset of growth and possibility. So that's what we're going towards. So if you were a 10 on everything, you'd probably be doing that. So I want you to, you know, first of all, just come into a little bit of breath and movement. You know, something that, uh, that invites you to feel yourself, to feel a sense of like, here I am-ness. You know, you, some, for me, sometimes I have to actually sort of like give myself a little bit of physical contact. And let your breathing move. Imagine that the phrase that I use is coming to you like a balloon or like a, like a light beanbag and sort of tossing uh, maybe a beach ball to you. And you're gonna catch it and kind of try it on. And then you're gonna give yourself a one to 10 score or assessment as to where you are. And if you wanna write this down, great. It's not necessary, but I want you to just get a sense of it. So here we go. I'm gonna go one at a time. I want you to, all right, whew, here I am. And I'm gonna use I statements so that you can actually try it on. I initiate completion as a way to free up my full vitality. I initiate completion. And just let your body kind of burble up a response. Nothing to make any sense of, nothing to analyze. I initiate completion as a way to free up my full vitality. And then do something new with your body. So you kind of bring yourself into a kind of refreshment. We're gonna refresh after each statement. I know the body signals and symptoms that come with being incomplete. I know the body signs and symptoms that come with being incomplete. And just one to 10, just whatever bubbles up. And then again, give yourself a little refreshment. It's kind of like letting, setting that statement down and coming into a new statement. I recognize the signs and symptoms that come with being current. I recognize the signs and symptoms that come with being current. And notice how your breathing is. And I always like to have people start by releasing their breath, especially if you've been holding it, and then start a new breath. And here's another statement. I easily let go of stuff that I am no longer using. I easily let go of stuff that I'm no longer using. And another breath or two, just kind of noticing how your body responds. And then I always think of like a dog shaking water off. Give yourself a little, ooh, little refreshment. I regularly check to see where I'm incomplete. Or another way I might put this is I regularly check for leftovers. Even if your mind doesn't necessarily understand that, your body may. Let's do a couple more. 
I consciously choose to face those things that I am avoiding and clear them up. I consciously choose to face those things that I've been avoiding and clear them up or clean them up. And another nice breath or two. Here's one that I think is quite important. Is I feel fully expressed with all of my loved ones. I feel fully expressed with all of my loved ones. And just kind of feel into that. Like, one to ten. And then just take a moment just to appreciate yourself for assessing yourself. <laughs> this is not a this is not a grade. This is just an awareness practice of where you are. And almost always you'll notice places where you're like, oh, you have some leftovers, yes? And if anyone scored 10 on all of those, if so, you can start teaching the class right now. <laughs> yeah, there's almost always stuff. There's like opportunities for completion that come up all the time. And it's completion to me is a, is a body experience. So it's, you can do it from your head, but really the whole point is that you want to get current so that you feel more you know, agile and, and capable and, and able to, you know, move with what's happening right now. If you're weighed down by a bunch of unexpressed stuff or incompletions, it makes it really hard to be agile. So I want you to think of anyone, oh, I'm going to just have you raise your hands, or you can even type in the chat. Anyone here, um, like, leave their stuff in the dryer for days? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Anyone here uh, have a, a long-standing habit of leaving dishes in the sink with stuff stuck on them for long periods of time? Right now, yeah, thanks Renee. <laughs> She's like, there are clothes in the dryer right now. <laughs> Anyone, um, tend to ruminate about conversations that may have started long time ago. <laughs> I should have said, I wish I would have said, man, if I had only said blah, 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 all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, so let's see another kind of, uh, let me get you, uh, uh, like a, oh, I know one that's just actually current for me. Anyone been thinking like, oh, I really should call and then don't. Yeah. Okay, so all, yes, right? All of those are experiences of being incomplete, like leftovers, loose ends. And they take part of your life energy and your creative energy to keep, you know, kind of like draining out in that direction. So actions not taken, that you said, like things you said you're gonna do that you didn't do. Um, like mm, feelings that are here that like related to certain experiences that you haven't let yourself feel. Um, choices that you wanna make that you have kind of not let yourself make. Like, I really wanna go I'm just thinking of like traveling, like now that stuff is kind of starting to open up, like I really wanted to go, but I, but I don't actually call to make any kind of arrangements. All of those things are uh, expressions of being incomplete. And they can be really small, like not calling someone that you wanna call, and it can be really big, like not having a conversation with someone because you think they're gonna be mad. Or not really letting yourself grieve a loss because you're afraid of feeling something. Not really letting th something complete because you, you might feel sad about it. 
if it really lets go. Or even like not ending a relationship because, you know, like you just don't want to feel alone. Like I'm kind of guilty of like hanging in there with relationship for a really long period of time. Cause like, you just like suck out the last little bits of marrow from the relationship rather than really like letting it end, letting something end. So I want you to feel this, find one thing that you feel like is not quite, like it hasn't quite completed. You haven't quite completed. It could be a conversation. It might be a relationship. It might be an action that you said you're gonna take but haven't taken. It might be, an, um, it could even be something cool, like someone you really wanted to appreciate but you haven't let yourself just go for it and let yourself appreciate them. So I want you to just let your, let your system like, you know, imagine that experience and feel what your body feels like when you're incomplete. Notice, I, I, I used to work in healthcare, so I like signs and symptoms because it just makes sense to me. So the signs and symptoms that, you're, that show up in your body when you're incomplete. And notice what you're experiencing. Like, like one of the things that I experience, and you're welcome to type into the chat because everyone has their own experience, but there's gonna be some common experiences is, I feel kind of flat, like, like, because all of my energy is going towards something that I'm not taking action on. I might feel a little bit um, dull. You know, those of you that have had any direct experience with me know that I'm pretty vital. So if I'm not feeling that kind of like aliveness and vitality, I go looking for where I might be incomplete. Yeah. Compressed and deflated, great. Tightness in your stomach, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, you kind of feel like Can also feel like, actually everyone try this because this is gonna be a body experience. Um, I want you to get where you can stand up and I want you to just start to stand up, but then don't. Yeah. Like, Oh. And notice your, what happens when you can start something, but you don't complete it. And notice those signs and symptoms. So the, it's great to be aware of how your body shows you when you're incomplete. Because then you can start to ask questions. Like, who, where, where do I have some leftovers? And I'm gonna give you some ideas here of how to, how to you know, take care of those. But I, I like, you know, your body is this incredible ally communicating to you, you know, what's up. And to be able to like really use the wisdom of your body to show you like, oh, great. I love slumped over, contracted, like being held back. Yeah, and I love that, Lisa. Like if you, I think of incompletions, have you, you guys know what bungee cords are? Everyone know what bungee cords are? They got the little hook on the end. So think about moving into your future with this like hook on the end and you're in, and you can like stretch it just so far before your incompletion brings you back. And you, you know, so it's like, I can just go so far and then I can't go anymore. So incompletions will hold you back from moving forward. They will drop your energy. They will leak your energy. And you, you'll, your body has a very clear way of communicating to you when you're incomplete. So if you're not feeling an easy flow of your aliveness and vitality, good thing to, to check on is like, where, where am I incomplete? Like, where is there a conversation I haven't completed? Where is there an agreement I haven't completed? Those are two good ones. Where is there a feeling experience that I'm avoiding that I haven't completed? Is there something that's ready to end that I haven't let end, that I haven't brought to completion? Now, I also think it's really cool to, to feel like, what's the feeling of being complete? 
So you know what you feel like when you're incomplete, but like, what's that feeling of being complete? So I wanna have you, um, this is one of my favorite examples. So anybody else like just get completely turned on when they have a list of errands they have to run and they could just check them all off. And they just get to the end of the day and you're like, I rock, this is awesome. I rule the world. Like you just feel like, oh my God, this is so good. So that's the feeling of being complete. Like check, 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 check. You know, you got your, I also think like when I balance, literally balance my checkbook and I'm like, oh yes, like that's all done. My finance, like at the end of every week I complete my finances. So I'm like, okay, that's done. That's complete. I just check, I actually check every night. Like are all my conversations complete? Is there anything that's been unexpressed? And then if there, if there is something, I make a little note like to, to text the person the next day. And I also do this with appreciations. Is there someone that I love and appreciate that I haven't said anything to? And then when I do that, I get this little burst of aliveness. So when you're complete, you have this like um, level of agility, of movement, a kind of freedom of movement. And a, a, you have access to the reservoir of your creative energy. When you're incomplete, you don't really have access to that. So take a moment and I want you to feel like, it, this could even be as simple as you, you cook dinner, you eat dinner, you do the dishes and you, or you put the dishes in the dishwasher and the kitchen is clean by the end of the night. And just notice, <laughs> people are like, I've never had that experience. <laughs> imagine having that experience or I love like the cycle of completion of like I do the clothes I wash the clothes I dry the clothes I fold the clothes I put the clothes away <sighs> so tune in and I want to have you type in the chat what are some of your whole body symptoms signs and symptoms when you're complete when you kind of have you know, you feel a sense of currency in your body. Uh, Renee, yes, yeah, sometimes I, I do this too. Sometimes I'll put something on the list that I've already done just so that I can check it off. <laughs> Anybody else do that? Or is it just me? <laughs> like check, check, check. Yeah, like bubbles of champagne on the inside, yes. What other signs and symptoms do you have when you feel current, when you feel complete? Vitality. Yeah, like, I love that, Christina. Like, okay, good, I'm good. Now I can take a nap. Yes. Sense of alignment, uh-huh. Yeah, because currency to me is, uh, is also about integrity. You know, that feeling of like, oh yeah, I've done that. I've completed that. I've, I've communicated that. Calm and at peace. Yes, beautiful. Yeah, and living in completion, by the way, is sort of like the laundry. It's, it's, not, it's not an event. It's not like done. It's an ongoing practice of, living in the art of completion, the art of continuing to take actions to, to be, you know, to be current, to get current, smooth and satisfied. I love that. Self-appreciative. Yes. It's really easy to appreciate yourself when you're, when you're current. So I want you to check in to see if you would be interested in feeling like an enjoy, expanding your capacity to enjoy more and more of that vitality, the sense of peace and relief. I'm looking proud. I love that word, clear. Would you be willing to expand your capacity to experience more and more of that for longer and longer periods of time? Yeah, I see many yeses. All right, great. So here's what I want to have you do. We're going to, I want to give you a few um, practical tips 
Because when you, the, and the first thing is always going to be to commit. So for those of you that are not as familiar with the actual Latin derivative of the word commit, <laughs> some people are like commit, like ball and chain, I'm committed. Um, it's like to commit, so it's always a verb, it's an action, to commit is to gather your energy and to move your energy in a chosen direction, okay? So it's not, it's not a noun, you don't get, you know, it's, it's a verb, it's an action thing. So when you commit, it's a, it's a choice to gather your energy and move in a chosen direction. So given what you've communicated to me so far, it sounds like people are willing to, to try this on. So I want you to have you try this on and since everyone is muted, I think you can try this. I invite you to try this on out loud because when you give it sound, it has a difference than if you do it in your head, okay? And if you want to really go for it, stand up. I'm, I'm going to stand up actually and move my little podium thing. When I, great. So because this is a whole body experience. This is not a, this is not a up top experience. This is a bottom up experience. So if you have room, stand up. And commit is like bringing your whole self into this. So, and you might give yourself a little shimmy or shake because if you're going to move towards commitment, you actually have to commit or move towards currency or, or completion. You have to commit to it. So this is always the place that you start. And so here's what I want to invite you to do. I commit to living in completion. So just try that on. It might, the words might change a little bit, but something like that. I commit to creating completion in my life. I commit to living in the state of completion. And just notice as you speak into that, how your body might want to move, how your breath moves, how you experience that. And you can do this a few times. So you could step back and imagine that you're jumping into a warm pool of loveliness. So you can like cannonball in or you can just hop in or you can shimmy your little booty in, however you wanna get in. Like I commit to creating completion. I commit to living into completion. And just notice. So you might feel scared which I would kind of, you know, is, is actually not a bad thing. If you're opening a new door to something new, you might feel scared. You might also feel a lot of uh, movement of energy. And from this commitment to completing, to living your life in completion, or I also like living my life in a state of currency. So being, getting current. I want you to begin to ask yourself, like get curious. And my favorite thing, um, one of my favorite things in the world is wonder, like, hmm, hmm, where is it in my life that I feel incomplete? And if you have something to write on, this would be a great place to write something like, hmm, where is it in my life that I feel incomplete? Or that there are leftovers, I like the word leftovers. So here are a couple of other questions to ask. Where is it that I have actions that I said I was going to do, but haven't done? Where is it that I have appreciations for someone that I haven't expressed. Where in my life do, do I have projects that I said I was going to do that I haven't done or haven't taken any action on. Oh. 
Are there any feelings that I have that, that I haven't taken all the way through, that I haven't felt in through to completion? So when, when you make a commitment to living into a state of completion, the actions necessary are to begin to identify where you are incomplete. Specifically actions or choices, uh, appreciations, agreements, like things you said you're gonna do that you haven't done yet, feelings that still need to get expressed, um, situations that like, I really wanna, um, I'm just thinking, I'm looking at my doorknob. It's like, I really wanna fix that doorknob, but then I don't do it. And it just sits there. And every time I open the, I turn the doorknob, I'm like, oh, I really need to fix this doorknob. I really still need to fix this doorknob. Like, so at thing, projects that I have started, but haven't completed. And I want you to, one of the things you can do is to begin to make a list. So you can actually get complete on your list of incompletions. So just getting them out of your head and on paper is already motion, is already putting things into, giving some stuff some momentum. Because otherwise they're just like, I really should call, I really should call, I really should call, I really should call, and then you don't call. So if you actually write down, call, call so-and-so, you at least get it out of your head. So beginning to make a list of places where you feel incomplete. Some may be very small and some might be, you know, have more juice to them. Once you've made, and this is the kind of more practical part, once you've made your list, then all you need to do, you don't have to like get complete all the way. You just have to take the next action step. Yeah, uh, thanks, Lisa. That's exactly right. Because there's so many, it's so overwhelming. Oh my God, I'm never going to get complete. Oh, which is why we don't get complete, <laughs> right? And then all your energy gets to go to being overwhelmed versus actually getting complete and then having all this energy available to you, right? So you, you start wherever you start. Now, I know that there's some philosophies that say start with the hardest thing, but I like to go the other direction. <laughs> Start with the easiest thing, because then you get a little feel for what it feels like. You get to start to feel like, oh, this is good. Like, has anyone um, ever gone to clear out their closet? And it's like, oh, God. But then you just take one item that you know you haven't worn for the last 10 years. You take one item out and you're like, oh, I feel better already. What else needs to leave my closet? And then things start to like, and then by the, you know, like in a week or two, you're like, oh, I love everything in my closet. You know, and it, it's really because you've taken the thing that's really easy, like, oh, I, haven't, I hate that thing. I don't know why I bought that thing. I never really wanted that. That leaves my closet and then that's done. And then those little action steps actually begin to feed your system with little kind of like homeopathic drops of aliveness so that you can calibrate easily. If you give yourself the biggest job first, you get this ginormous flow of aliveness in all of a sudden, almost always it's gonna be like, shit, you know? <laughs> and you're like, okay, let's go back to this. So like the little bits allow you to recalibrate to new levels of aliveness a little bit at a time rather than getting the big gush. So we want to take the friendly path to completion. Baby steps, absolutely. Low hanging fruit, yeah, that's such a great thing. So listing your incompletions, just getting them out of your head. Find the three or four easiest ones. And whatever is the next action step 
that allows you to move in the direction of getting complete. And this is also a place where you can use your body intelligence. Like, you know, you, my, my feeling is like my body wants to be in a state of aliveness and well being. So I can just add, you know, like, okay, body, what's the very next action step that moves me in the direction of getting complete with this communication, with this project, with this, you know, whatever it is, with this expression, this feeling expression. And then the next little column in your worksheet is by when are you going to do that? And you actually give yourself a date and a time that you can then check off. Now, there's one more step in my world of completion, which is that once you've checked even the simplest step off, you do something to appreciate yourself, to celebrate yourself. Like maybe you go to a movie or you take a walk with your favorite person or you take a hot bubble bath or you just mm, like, good job. Give yourself a bunch of attaboys or girls. like do a little I did it dance. Even if you didn't complete it all the way, you completed that step and in process is enough. So everyone say that to yourself. In process is enough. In, oh, I just got this rush of warmth up my legs. In process is enough. Remember, completing is like the laundry. There's always going to be more. But you taking action in service of getting complete, that is enough. And I personally recommend that you start with the easiest and then you get the juice. So if you get the feedback of what it feels like to start getting complete, even with things that seem like they don't matter, then that's a much, you know, it's a, it's a great encouragement to start turning towards and taking the actions towards things that may be a little bit tougher. So here's some ideas. Phone calls that you've been meaning to make that you haven't made. Letters or emails that you've been meaning to write but you haven't written. Projects that you you, that you're conceiving, but you haven't taken action on. Now with projects, I would say um, you, you either take action on it, you put it in the someday maybe file, or you just say, that seems like a really good idea and not now. So you don't have to do everything that you think you should do. communications of any kind that you haven't gotten complete. So here's, and one way to think about it is if you think about someone and you don't feel an easy sense of, of connection with them, look at what you have, what you, what's left to, com to communicate. And it might, it doesn't have to be bad. It could be like, um, you know, I, I feel scared to let you know how much I care about you. Feel scared I'm going to be too much. But you let yourself complete a communication. I have all this other stuff I could do, but I'm noticing the time. <laughs> so I want to just pause for a moment and have you, you know, just check in with yourself 
to see if you have any particular questions that have come up or things that you would like to communicate here that would allow you to feel a sense of ease and flow with what we're up to right now. Could be questions for me, could be questions in general. And you can use your electronic hand or wave us down. Oh, I see Deer's hand, I see Rebecca's hand. Oh, got all sorts of hands. Okay, let's start with Deer. Hey, Deer. <laughs> Hi. Um, so I, I have been witnessing you ad, like advertising this for a while, and I've noticed um, some resistance come up even before I got here about completing. So my question is, because I think this is a both and for me, there's, there's like with the dishes, I noticed that I have a rhythm where I actually enjoy doing the dishes in the morning. And what it's kind of like, my body just does the dishes in the morning, whether whether I think about it or not, mm -hmm. right? It's it's kind of like just following that, and and then there's a part of me that's like, no, I should I should do the dishes and have a clean kitchen at the end of the day. That's complete. That's what complete looks like. Mm -hmm. And so I just love to hear your thoughts on like, you know, like what does complete look like for me? I think that's what I'm discovering mm -hmm. now, versus. I don't know, this right right or wrong way of looking or feeling complete. Okay, great. Well, one, there's no right or wrong way. Right. So okay. just be clear about that. Um, there's a great Zen story that one of my mentors used to say that that was one of the kind of things that stirred, you know, stirred my curiosity about this. And and the the student comes to the master and he says, Master, I really want to feel enlightened. What's that? And for me, enlightenment, whatever, you can add whatever, like present, aware, awake, whatever. I like, I really want to feel the experience of um, enlightenment. You know, tell me, like, what's the key to enlightenment? And, and the master turns to him and he says, um, did you eat breakfast? And the student says, well, yes. And he said, did you wash your dish? And it was that simple. It's like taking something all the way through to the end. So it may, it's not like your my way, your way, whatever is the right way, but you might experiment. I like using this as a kind of, you know, like trial and error experimentation, like for a week or for the next three days, I'm going to see what it's like to actually do my dishes at the end of the day, to have my kitchen be clear at the end of the night and just see what happens. It may not, may not be a thing for you. You know, mm -hmm. I... So you get to you get to decide for yourself what complete feels like because completion ultimately is an inside job. So I'm complete when I call something complete. I may have feelings about it, you know, that are mine to feel, but like, you know, like completion is an inside job. I might be in the middle of a project and be like, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. And be like, okay, that's over move on, you know, all the stuff that I did with it is done. So, but it's complete for me. Yeah. So you get to experiment and see what works and you're, what you're going for are those feel that those signs and symptoms of completing. Like, do I feel more of, you know, if I do the dishes at night or in the morning, where do I get the most juice? Mm -hmm. And then just check it out. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Kat, I think you're next. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Um, I'm curious about being in relationship and having different ways of completing or not. And so it's quite interesting how I I need completion to be like faster and more like, mm -hmm. you know, and as my partner, yeah. like he can not clean. Well, the dishes is fine with us, but like, like is like 
uh, working space and stuff like there's no completion and um yeah i'm just curious because it's like we don't have the same opi like opinion on it or for him it's not important or actually i think he doesn't know even that it's a thing to complete or something totally like yeah you may have more of a direct relationship with getting complete than he does yeah yeah and it also sounds like there's a pace you have a different pace of doing things yeah and like if i complete like if i'm done with an art project or whatever like i'm gonna clean up after or at least sometimes it lasts a week and after the week I clean up, mm -hmm. but he never cleans up after and he's in his studio space and it can stay like that for like six months. And then at one point I'm like, clean, and then I do it with him. So it's quite interesting to like experience that being two in the same house. Yeah, the, to me, this is a great place for, uh, for communication and questions like what does that feel like to you you know rather than than asserting your point of view as to how things should be over there in his world of completion like what 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 does it actually feel like for you when you're complete or how you know what do you what do you experience so that you 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 generate a sense of curiosity around it rather than asserting your point of view or position yeah I think right now it's like static -y in that area because like for instance like if I give some furniture or some stuff in the house like I'm all excited I'm like oh that feels good and he's like what what are you talking about and he like makes fun of me <laughs> in a cute way so I think I think we're we're like off in that area and I'm like how can we I'm just wondering like a mini mini micro step like where to start like having one point in common to start even the conversation yeah well I love the I love the question that you're asking like what I think it's what what's a, and one of the people that I studied with they called the assemblage point what's our it's like the point of origin yeah. where What's the point of origin that lets us begin to have this conversation? And you'll almost never attract someone that does it exactly the way you do. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and to like, you know, recognize like th these are my signs and symptoms. That's him. That's another way of completing too, right? That's him. Those are it's his way of doing things. And, you know, I'm going to take things all the way through in the way that's my way of doing things that feels good to me. And and that's his way of doing things and and then and also like where where is that point of connection that we can start the conversation yeah i think just saying it like that makes i have ideas now so okay cool thank you <laughs> cool all right is that rebecca yeah hey rebecca Yes, great. Thank you, Audrey. Uh, so the thing that um, got me to sign up for this tonight is, uh, oh, I um, is a conversation that my brother and I have been having over email um, for many years, actually, mm -hmm. that's completely incomplete. <laughs> Good completely, Good completely incomplete. <laughs> And I'm, I'm trying to discern like how to speak about this because I don't want it to be too heavy because it's almost like I have to go to a confessional. I almost feel like I need it like a, a, a priest, <laughs> but right. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you. Sacraments. Yes. Um, this is a sacred conversation. Uh, so the last email he sent me and he's like 10 years older than me. So I have all kinds of expectations that he would be more mature than I am. But anyway, that's a whole other whoops. <laughs> that's a whoops <laughs> um so the last email he sent me was literally a list of his complaints like a list of two years of experiences where he somehow where he somehow got offended by me oh. mm -hmm. uh 
and so you know I was listening to gay I've been doing so much listening um to gay and Katie uh books on tape and so forth and he was saying like I've you know I've uh mediated like thousands of people and it's very rare for people to like if you say hey but it, you know if one person blames like it becomes this victim fest where well I'm gonna try and prove that I'm more of a victim than you so I don't want to do that with him um so and it's my number one biggest incompletion right now and I think I like your um so I'm looking for help of, but, and I love your pointers around like feelings that need to be expressed. Mm -hmm. um, and it feels important to me to actually go step-by-step step from his letter where he said, well, when you hosted my birthday party on Zoom and then you over, you talked for the first five minutes, like, and then he had all kinds of judgments about that. I'd like to actually say, actually, this was my experience of that moment and why I spoke the way I spoke and why I did what I did. And this is where I was coming from and what, what you shared doesn't actually land as truth mm -hmm. for me, just to sort of settle the score. So I just wondered um, what your thoughts were or if there was another tactic or frame. I'm a little suspicious when you use the word settling the score. <laughs> mm, yeah, okay. Right, so I'm like whack whack. Yeah, like psh, psh, so it, it sounds like you know. I would here's where I would actually just get curious, okay? Because okay. curiosity is always going to be a better choice than asserting your position or explaining or convincing or justifying or that yeah. doesn't actually generate any kind of completion. Yeah. That just keeps the drama going. Yes. Right. Yes. That's what so I, I would just get curious, like, all right. So how? What do mm -hmm. I need to feel complete here? What do I need? So this doesn't have anything to do with him. Yeah. What do I need to do? Are there feelings that are that I that are present with me that I that are I haven't expressed? Mm. And you don't have to express them to him. You just need to express them. Mm -hmm. And that's I think that's a key for anyone that's still here on the call. I know we're a couple minutes after. Is that oftentimes there's stuff to express, but the person you think you have to express to is not actually available. Yes. So yes. you don't have to express it to them. You just need to express it for you. Uh -huh. You could do that in writing. You could do just go out for a walk and like, oh yeah, blah, 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 blah. I feel really sad that and just let yourself blah, 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 just, just go stream of consciousness so yes. that you get to feel complete. Hmm. What he's up to, you have zero control over that. True. Correct. <laughs> You're probably never going to convince him to see your point of view. <laughs> so, I think that's like, accurate. <laughs> that's his point of view. That's his business. It could be like, oh, I, you know, I see you have a lot of thoughts about that. Mm. Mm. And that's all you say. <laughs> and then you go off and do your, you know, like you complete in a way that is satisfying for you. Mm hmm. Is that how, is that helpful? Yeah, it, it is helpful. And I love, I think the thing you said tonight, completion is an inside job that landed like most fully. And thank you for taking the time to kind of work through that with me. That makes so much sense. And I love the idea of actually even writing to him and saying, wow, I'm complete about all of this. <laughs> like if it's, you know, when it's genuine, but that just to be able to do all of that on my own, I don't actually need to, because I wanted to avoid the back and forth and I've been unclear how mm -hmm. to do that genuinely so it's actually been many months that i haven't yeah, sounds like you have a lot of feelings about all this right i thank you so much for expressing that yeah yeah that's great thanks yeah yeah done done <laughs> oh wow and then you can come back to yourself and say what do i need to do to feel complete mm. yeah that's good Thank you. Great. Well, we're a few minutes over speaking of completion. <laughs> yeah, I know I was laughing. I was like, oh, well, we're playing with completions a little over. Yeah. Oh, I, I, and I'll just say just for me, and then I'll turn it back over to you, Audrey. Um, if there's anybody who needs the call, uh, needs to leave the call now. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. And um, thank you, Audrey, for 
a packed, I, I, I already had somebody asking me, where will the recording be? You know, it's like, that's, <laughs> it's definitely one that's going to be a gem for, for so many people. So thank you so much for that. And, and, um, oh, I'll unspotlight you. Sorry there. <laughs> Sorry, Rebecca. So, uh, Audrey, I'll just turn it back over and any, if you want to share anything about yourself and, uh, yeah. whatnot, uh, just to complete the call. So thank you okay, everyone. Thank and you. Thank you. Thanks, Audrey. In completion, <laughs> uh, well, one, you're welcome to um, friend me on Facebook. It's my name. Uh, two, um, keep an eye out for a course coming up in the spring called uh, Personal Death Awareness, which is around completion on a larger scale, but it includes everything that we're talking about now, but also takes it out to, it's, it's going to be an eight-week course. Um, three, Katie and I are going to be teaching or planning to teach um a course on early developmental stuff called rebooting which is also about it's about birthing but birthing is also an ending and a beginning so it also includes a lot of this these goodies and if you want to connect with me directly if there's something that got really stimulated and you want some more direct contact please feel free to contact me directly i see michelle put my email thank you so much and um yeah, thanks for joining me. This, I, the only issue I had with this course was I was like, an hour? Oh, crap. How am I going to do that? Uh, <laughs> so, so, so many good things uh, to be here. And I would just encourage you to continue to expand and refine your relationship with completing as a way to keep expanding your life force energy, your sense of creativity your sense of freedom out in the world. And if there's any way that I can support you in doing that, please let me know. It's one of my favorite things. So thank you so much. Wonderful. If you want to unmute and say goodbye. Yeah, everyone unmute and like make a sound of completion. What, what sound does your completion want to make? Like, whoa. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Bye, you. everybody. Bye, Bye. 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 Bye.